In this example, we're going to determine the radius and the interval of convergence for the following power series. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x minus 7 raised to the nth power over n times 5 raised to the nth power. Because not everything in here is a power of n, I'm going to apply the ratio test. An observation before I apply the ratio test would be the center of this power series which we get by setting our x minus 7 equal to 0. Therefore, this power series is going to be centered at x equals 7. According to the ratio test, I'm going to set up the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio of the n plus 1th term over the nth term of our sequence. Now because it already exists as a fraction, we're going to make ourselves a nice big fraction here. Big. Replacing all of our n's with an n plus 1, this will be x minus 7 raised to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 times 5 raised to the n plus 1 power. The denominator will simply be the nth term of the sequence, and we'll look thusly. Because we have a rather large fraction divided by fraction situation, as is typical, we will multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So x minus 7 to the x plus 1 power, excuse me, to the n plus 1 power, over n plus 1 times 5 raised to the n plus 1 power, times, flipping the top and the bottom, that will give us n times 5 to the n, over x minus 7 raised to the n power. What we typically do for the ratio test is to allow n to go to infinity, we're going to group together things that look kind of like each other. For example, the n and the n plus 1 came from the same term, so I'm going to group those together. The 5 to the n and 5 to the n plus 1 came from the same place as well, so 5 to the n, 5 to the n plus 1. And x minus 7 to the n plus 1 and x minus 7 to the n came from the same place as well. I'm going to perform some algebraic manipulations to try to get everything into a form where we can take the limit as n goes to infinity. One manipulation that I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the initial fraction, top and bottom, by 1 over n and distribute through both the numerator and denominator. 1 over n times n gives us 1, 1 over n times n plus 1 gives us 1 plus 1 over n. The reason I do that is so that now as n goes to infinity, this 1 over n will simply go to 0. 5 to the n over 5 to the n plus 1. We can express 5 to the n plus 1 as 5 times 5 to the n, and cancel 5 to the n with 5 to the n, leaving us with 1 fifth. <clears throat> Performing the same algebraic manipulation on the n plus 1 power of x minus 7, we can call that x minus 7 times x minus 7 to the nth power to cancel out the nth powers, leaving us with x minus 7 over 1. Now as I take the limit as n goes to infinity, the first fraction will become 1 over 1 plus 0, that's 1. The last fraction will become x minus 7 on the top, and the second fraction will leave us with 5 on the bottom. According to the ratio test, as long as this is less than, maybe equal to 1, this will converge. This allows us to set up the following compound inequality. Negative 1 is less than and maybe equal to x minus 7 over 5, which is less than and maybe equal to positive 1. This can be solved using two steps of algebra. First, we multiply through by 5. And then we add 7 to the result. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2. And 5 plus 7 is 12. So the initial interval of convergence is going to be from 2 to 12. At this point, it is unknown whether or not we're allowed to include the endpoints, so I'm going to include those as dashed parentheses. Additionally, if we were to consider the center as well as each of the endpoints on the real number line, we know that the interval of convergence will be all of the numbers between 2 and 12, 
and perhaps also equal to those two values. Regardless, the distance from 7 to 2, or from 7 to 12, is going to be 5, letting us know that our radius of convergence is going to be equal to 5, half the length of the entire interval. Now to determine whether or not the endpoints are included, I am going to plug 2 and 12 back into the original series and see if the series that we get converges or diverges. So we'll start with at x equals 2, the lower endpoint. I'll be plugging x equals 2 back into the original series. So with that in mind, this will become the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 minus 7 raised to the n power divided by n times 5 to the n. Then we'll perform a couple of algebraic manipulations to this. Two minus seven is going to give us negative five to the n power. And then we'll still have n times five raised to the n power. Now when you have five, uh, negative 5 to the n and 5 to the n and they're being divided, that means that I can factor out the power of n, and it works that way because this is division, n from the denominator will stay as 1 over n, and this will be negative 5 divided by 5 raised to the nth power. Simplifying that fraction, negative 5 over 5 will give us negative 1 raised to the n power over n. Upon initial inspection, I see that what we have here is a version of the alternating harmonic series. From one of our initial examples in another video, we know that the alternating harmonic series converges. Therefore, x equals 2 will be included in the interval of convergence. We also need to test our other endpoint, <clears throat> the other endpoint being x equals 12. So we'll plug in x equals 12 to the original series, n equals 1 to infinity of 12 minus 7 raised to the n power over n times 5 raised to the n power. Performing a little bit of algebraic manipulation with this, 12 minus 7 will give us 5 to the n power over n times 5 to the n power. The 5 to the n powers will cancel each other out, leaving us with the sum of 1 over n. The sum of 1 over n, this is the harmonic series. Which we know from a previous test, diverges. Therefore, at x equals 12, we do not get a convergent series, therefore, at x equals 12, it is not part of the interval of convergence. So x equals 12 is excluded from the interval of convergence. As a result, final answer for our interval of convergence the initial interval of convergence went from 2 to 12. We are including 2, and we are excluding 12. So a final answer for the interval of convergence will look just like this.